Welcome back. In the last video, we were calculating some psychrometric properties for this given condition where we have a dry bulb temperature of 30 degrees centigrade, a wet bulb temperature of 20 degrees centigrade, and we had a total pressure of 101 kilopascals. And we got through, we calculated out the saturation pressure at the wet bulb temperature, uh, the saturation specific humidity ratio at that temperature, and then we calculated out the actual specific humidity ratio for our setup, and that was one of the first major things we found, and we found that value here. And then we continued on to find saturation pressure at the dry bulb temperature, along with the saturation pressure at that same temperature, which is over here. And we ran out of time, and so in this video we're calculating out what's left. Mu, the degree of saturation, phi, the relative humidity, nu, the specific volume, H, enthalpy, partial pressure of the vapor, and the dew point temperature. So let's go ahead and get started with our first property, the degree of saturation mu. And this will be an easy one because we already have the information from what it was defined to be. So mu is defined to be omega divided by the omega at saturation at a given temperature and pressure. And so if we're looking at a temperature of what we have for dry bulb and we have this total pressure that we've been dealing with, we already calculated out both of these things. So our specific humidity ratio for our sample is 0 0.0106 and the saturation at the same temperature is 0 0.0237. So if I do that, I'll get a fraction that looks like this, 0 .0, 0 0.0106 divided by 0 0.0273, and this is all unitless, and this will come out around 0.39 or 39%. So we now have the degree of saturation. So move on to relative humidity. In a previous video, we used the relationship of mu and some other formulas for specific humidity, and we derived this formula for relative humidity. And it's a fraction. We have mu over 1 minus 1 minus mu, and that's multiplied by the partial pressure at saturation divided by the total pressure. And this here is at our dry bulb temperature. So let's fill in values. So here we had 0 0.039 on the top divided by 1 minus 1 minus 0 0.39. And we had solved for that saturation pressure here, 4.25 kilopascal. And we are dividing by 101 kilopascal. And if you do this, you should get a value around 40% or 0 0.4. So there you have it. We now have calculated out relative humidity. Moving on to nu, the specific volume. In a previous video, we found a formula for that. So let me write that down. That is the gas constant for dry air times temperature times this 1 point 1 plus 1 1.6078 times omega and that's divided by the total pressure that we have the specific gas constant for dry air is around 285 point Zero 0.5, I take that back, it's 287.055, and that is in joules per kilogram Kelvin, and we have T, which this needs to be in absolute units, that's an important part of this, so this is at 303.15 Kelvin, 
multiplied by 1 plus 1.60. And we're needed, running out of space. And that is multiplied by our specific humidity ratio, which was 0 0.0106. So that's multiplied 0 0.0106. Sorry, I ran out of room. And then if I put this on the bottom, since this is joules, we need to be careful. This total pressure is actually in Pascal, so we'll have 101,000 Pascal. 101 kilopascal, 101,000 Pascal. Now, I think the units are a very important part of this, so actually let me do a little digression here. A joule is a newton over a, a newton times a meter, if you broke these units down, and a pascal is a force newton over an area, <coughs> excuse me, over a meter squared. So if we wanted to have joules and pascals be equivalent, a pascal, if I took this and multiplied it by a meter cubed, you would actually end up with that canceling and that being just a newton meter. So a joule, one joule is actually equal to a pascal times meters cubed. And we want this, this specific volume to be in units of meters cubed per kilogram. And so we'll, we'll notice we have all these things here. The kilograms will cancel, or I'm sorry, these are kelvins will cancel. And we have a joule divided by a pascal. And we have a kilogram on the bottom here, which we want left over. So we won't worry about that so much. But if we have a joule, which is a newton meter, and we have a pascal, which is a, I guess, Pascal is a joule divided by meters cubed. So if I did that, and joules divided by meters cubed, the joules will cancel. This meters cubed comes on the top, and eventually we get something that's meters cubed per kilogram, which is what we want. So that's why all these units work out. And if you did that calculation, the specific volume will come out to be 0 0.876 meters cubed per kilogram of dry air again. So we are moving along, churning along. So of the things we had left, oh, let me, we have the enthalpy, partial pressure of the vapor, and the dew point temperature. And I've actually run out of room at the bottom of this. So let me go to the top and delete out some things for you. Enthalpy is fairly straightforward. We we had a formula derived, and I'm going to use these as if they don't have units, but they do. 1.006 times T plus specific humidity ratio times 2,501 plus 1.805 times T. And this is a formula that has been derived for SI units only. If you are in inch pounds or in the English system, you will have a analogous but different formula for this. And it's important to know that these temperatures are in degrees C, and this is still our specific humidity ratio, which is unitless. So let's fill in the values we need for this, and this will be the dry bulb temperature. So this is 30 degrees C. And if I remember right, it was 0 0.0106 for specific humidity, 2501 plus 1.805, also times 30 degrees C. And if you do that, you will get an enthalpy that is around 57.18 kilojoules per kilogram dry Remember, all these things that are normalized versus mass are going to be normalized versus the mass of the dry air. And the reason we do that is because in a typical HVAC process, the amount of dry air from the beginning to end does not change, while a lot of times we will add or take out moisture. We will humidify or dehumidify. Okay, we are in the home stretch. We want the partial pressure of the water vapor, and that is equal to the 
total pressure times the specific humidity ratio divided by 0 0.622 plus that same humidity ratio. So let me put numbers in slots, as I like to say. And we can do this, we'll say 101 kilopascals times 0 0.0106 divided by 0 0.622 plus 0 0.0106. You do this, and our partial pressure of the water vapor in our actual sample is around 1.69 kilopascals. Okay, okay, last step. We are calculating out the dew point temperature. And the dew point temperature comes from a long expression that has similar form to what we needed for calculating the saturation pressure at a given temperature. Um, so let me actually take some time to write out all those coefficients for you. And then we'll see how we're going to calculate the dew point temperature. And then we're done. And we've calculated all the moist air properties. Okay, so here we go. This is the dew point temperature formula. And again, we have all these constants, C14, 15, 16, 17, 18. It doesn't start at zero because there's another formula that I have. Or if you look in the fundamentals, I have the constants before this. And we have this alpha term. And alpha is simply the natural log of the partial pressure of the vapor. And we, this formula here is the valid for when a dew point temperature is going to be between 0 degrees centigrade and 93 degrees centigrade, which is an outrageous value for typical HVAC applications. And it's important to know that this should be in kilopascal along with this alpha term. This needs to be kilopascal. So this is the natural log of 1.69 kilopascal and remember usually when you think of natural logs and exponentials you don't they really shouldn't have units but in this case they do this is just a, a formula fit to data um, the natural log of 1.69 is 0 0.523 e to the 0 0.523 will actually give you 1.69 so this would go in for all these alpha terms. This here is simply the 1.69. And if you do this calculation out, you will get a dew point temperature of around 14.86 degrees centigrade. So congratulations, you have made it through this whole sequence. We've calculated everything that we would have wanted for any HVAC circumstance that we're investigating and this was all done knowing that we had a measured dry bulb temperature from an ordinary thermometer we had the wet bulb temperature from a a adiabatic saturation experiment experiment or a sling psychrometer and we had total pressure given from a barometer which is usually pretty quite available and we got out everything we want all the humidity parameters enthalpy and we did this in a way that could be programmed in a spreadsheet or in any sort of computer programming language. So I hope you've found this two-part example calculation helpful. I've already been well over my time. So see you in the next videos. And please subscribe to my channel and like these videos if you find them useful. Share with friends. Would greatly appreciate it.